Welcome to episode 31 of So You Want to Be a Star in the Music Business. Uh, today's episode is about the word legalese. L-E-G-A-L-E-S-E. -E. Don't get scared, don't run away. That is the name of the language used by lawyers and the law. Uh, the reason we all want to run away is because, uh, to put it in other terms, let's say somebody were to put a 42-page contract in front of you, written in French, and all you speak is Spanish. Would you That's sign it? That's a very good idea. Very good example. You wouldn't. So why would you sign something written in a language you don't understand? Now, the problem is most managers, lawyers, record executives, promoters, they don't care that you understand what you're signing. And Lord knows if it's 42 pages long, you're going to get scared. Hey, wait a minute. How am I supposed to understand any of this? Anyway, I don't have time for it. So first we're going to give you, uh, there's an answer to that question. First we're going to give you an example, a very short one. Kevin? Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> this is our official war against legalese. It's just, it misspelled the word, but legalese, and this definition just sticks out to me. Um, it's defined as specialized, keyword, specialized language used between legal professionals, not between regular people. So these things are drafted by attorneys and they're usually given to regular people. They're not drafted by attorneys and given to attorneys. So these things are made to look like something that's in a different language. So with that said, we're just, uh, my example is reading out something that's kind of extreme, but just to bring the point that is these things are written clear and we just want uh, you guys to really make sure you're surrounding yourself with people who make these things clear because this makes a, a big difference on your, in your career. So, for my example, uh, try to bear with me. This is part of a, uh, a production deal for a record contract. Okay. Notwithstanding, that word alone... Just will, read the whole thing. ...will confuse most people. <laughs> Notwithstanding, anything to the contrary contained in the foregoing where any masters here under have been licensed as opposed to any sale in the form of finished product to any part for use on and for sale as premiums the selling price shall mean the fictitious price approved by company from time to time in connection with computation of royalties due to company in respect of such premiums. Now, what the hell did I just say? Right, and there is no reason to pay someone $875 an hour to write that. And that's what happens. Um, it, we're laughing at it because we actually can understand this stuff, uh, but it is like learning another language. Basically, all that paragraph meant, by the way, just if you need to know, is... Um, there are times in which CDs are given away as promotion or there are special rates that are made if you're selling them to libraries or giving them to military personnel. Special deals are made by record labels all the time, uh, as they should be. And this just basically says that they don't have to pay you the full royalty that they're allowed to come up with something. If they give away something or create something new, they're allowed to come up with their own version of the royalty based on that to either pay you or not pay you anything. And that's it. Now, um, that to me would be agreeable because we understand that happens. Uh, I would probably as a manager ask them to also say, but I will be given notice of such things, uh, which often does not happen, but that's the worst that I would suggest. And that's only one little paragraph in dozens and dozens of pages. So here's our advice. Uh, one, I know it's hard, but if someone puts a contract in front of you and says, sign it now or you're not going on tour, sign it now or you're not getting the record deal, you need to have left enough time that afternoon to say, I want someone who can walk me through this, my manager, my lawyer, um, anybody, even a record executive, to sit down next to me and explain paragraph by paragraph mm -hmm. what is in this and to translate it for me. You should ask your manager to try to write your booking agreement, your agreement between you and the manager in regular English. 
Now, that doesn't mean a lawyer shouldn't approve it and not, you know, lawyers can make suggestions, hey, you left out this important clause that can only be written in legal language. That's fine. But you need to understand it and you need to train the people you work with to use regular English. I know of plenty of professionals that do this. There'll be a lot of lawyers disagreeing with me, a lot of managers disagreeing with me, and a lot of record execs. My suggestion is find the people who communicate with you well and on your level as best as possible. There you go. Okay. That's it for today. Uh, we would love you to be part of the war against legalese and work hard or understand as much of it as you can also. On that note. And that's it. I'm Kevin Curtin. Mitch Weiss. Uh, check out the website. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. The website is www.mwentgroup.com. Information is also below this video. Also, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on Tumblr. Uh, just make sure you follow us. All right. Have a good one. See you tomorrow.